Eternal and Almighty God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this occasion. We thank you, Lord, for being the great God that you are. We thank you, God, that we are able to assemble here today for this occasion. We ask now that you would have your way and that you would be with us throughout the entire program. We pray, God, for all of our public officers that we will give excellent and exceptional customer service, especially in the departments that are the focus uh, for this program. So we thank you, Lord, and we ask that you just continue to have your way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can I ask that you remain standing as we invite Mr. Gregory Adams, the chief planner, to give us the national anthem and then Ms. Akisha Smith to render the territorial song. Mr. Augustus Jaspert, 
Deputy Governor, Mr. David Archer. Former Deputy Governor, Mrs. Rosalie Adams. Senior managers, heads of department, public officers, good morning. It's a beautiful morning. Despite the weather predictions, it's a very beautiful morning. So good morning. All right, the public service transformation journey continues. Following cabinet's approval last year, ministries and departments have been seeking ways in which they could enhance the customer service experience along the way. Amidst the stop signs, the detours, and roadblocks, we have arrived at this morning's destination, 1211 Admin Drive. The highlight at this stop is the launch of the virtual customer service mailbox, where the Office of the Deputy Governor is seeking to promote a culture of exceptional customer service. For those of you who have traveled with us thus far, we thank you. We welcome you to explore all that this stop has to offer. You can expect to hear all about the incentives for public officers, as well as the hardworking A-team that has been working behind the scenes to launch this product, from the chief tour guide, the deputy governor. You can expect to see a video demonstration from the assistant to the tour guide, private secretary, Ms. Kelly Moon Rubain. Witness a special presentation and hear from the governor and remarks from one of our pilot leaders, the director of trade, Mrs. Keria Christopher. Ladies and gentlemen, we expect that this morning's tour will be about one hour, but if we should exceed that time, we ask for your patience. You see, this is an exciting time in the public service, and we want to ensure that all of our passengers are fully apprised of all the events along the way. Following the presentations, you might have questions, so feel free to stay behind and ask the chief tour guide before we embark on the next leg of our journey. On behalf of the Deputy Governor, I welcome you. We now continue with our proceedings and we will ask the governor at this time to come and give brief remarks and then I will let you know what else is on this leg of our journey. Thank you. Now I'm not a massive Monday morning person, I have to admit. Uh, I quite like my weekends. I try not to work too much at the weekends, although things do sometimes get in the way of it, that. But on Monday mornings, there's something that gets me out of bed quite quickly, when I sort of, the alarm goes off. Actually, I have two alarms. I have my alarm, and then I have a six-year-old uh, alarm, which is slightly more forceful when he jumps on top of me and starts, uh, starts telling me to get up. But actually, as I lie there, I rem remember why I get up in the morning, because it's the same reason I think we probably all do as public servants. Get up in the morning because I have the best job I could ever imagine. And the sole purpose of that job is to serve the public. It's to get up every day and to think, how do I serve? How do I make people's lives better? How do I transform opportunities for people? How do I help those in need? How do I make life simpler? How do I help businesses flourish, operate? How do I take this fantastic territory forward? And as soon as that happens, and as soon as my son stops jumping on me, I jump out of bed excited. And this is a little bit about what this is about. This is about remembering that we have the most fantastic jobs ever. It might not always feel like that. We stand at the moment in a building that isn't looking its, mo its best, but actually our core, core role is still the best opportunity we could ever be presented with. There's very few people who can say every morning they get up to do something that is going to help people. And every day when they go to bed, to know that they did help people. So I applaud, as you know, everything that all of the public service does every day. When the Deputy Governor launched with Covenant's approval, a public service transformation plan, both the previous Deputy Governor and then the current Deputy Governor taking this forward, this is something that I am hugely excited about. At the heart of it is a very simple message. At the heart of it is one word, really, and it's in the clue of all of our job descriptions. At the heart of it is the word public. We get up in the morning to serve the public. We get up in the morning to do the best job for those we serve. We get up in the morning to do the best job for this fantastic territory. So the, the simple words behind us, how did I serve you, is actually quite a good thing to keep in our head. 
Now, the Public Service Transformation Programme has lots of different elements, lots of exciting areas, lots of quite difficult areas that are going to take hard work, dedication, time, a bit of money to make sure that we achieve the full opportunities. But at the end of it, we will emerge as a public service that is even better for the future. Today is an important step in that. As we launch the virtual customer mailbox, it's something that actually is an opportunity for the public to answer the question, how did you serve me? So whilst we think it, let's get some feedback on that. And feedback, people are often worried about feedback. Feedback is something that often people can be challenged by. When I go back to London every now and then, I get feedback. Um, I'm not allowed to reveal what the Queen says, but um, I do get feedback. And feedback is a great thing. Feedback is a gift. It's an opportunity to say thank you for that. Whether that is good feedback, bad feedback, it's all about helping us improve as individuals and as a service and as an organization and as a territory as a whole. Now, a simple step in that is what we're launching today, making it easy for the public or easier for the public to give that feedback with some exciting ways of how we do that. So can I applaud the team who've been working on it, applaud the Deputy Governor for his leadership and PSA Graham. <laughs> can I applaud the early adopter departments, I think we're calling them, if that's correct, and those teams who are putting their, their necks out a little bit in terms of trialing it and testing it. Uh, but you don't get anywhere without being bold and taking a first step. So well done to all of you, and I look forward to seeing how that works. And I wish us all the success in this. This is an important time as we take the territory forward, and that comes with taking it forward with the public, telling us how we're doing and how they can help us transform and be better. So every day or tomorrow when we wake up, not only will we still have that core reason to get up in the morning, but we'll also have a little bit of feedback about what we did the day before and how we can get up even more excited and even more prepared to do better than we did the day before. So thank you again. I wish the program, the Mailbox program, huge success. I look forward to seeing the results of it. And more importantly, I look forward to seeing the transformation that results from this as we go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. And now to hear from our Chief Tour Guide for today, Deputy Governor David Archer. Good morning, everyone. Governor, good morning. Chief Tour Guide, that's a new name. Uh, but notwithstanding the protocol has been established, allow me, please, I would love to, to recognize my PSs who are here because they are actually in that big bus along with me. We have our, our PS Davies, Ministry of Health and Social Development. Our PS in the Ministry of Natural Resource and Labor, Mr. Ron Smith Berkeley. And Ms. Brenda Ty Letsom, who is representing the, the PS of Ministry of Education also. And our other senior manager, the Director of Human Resources, Mr. Donovan Stevens. And our cabinet secretary, Ms. Sandra Ward, who should really be in the front with the rest of our colleagues, so forgive me. But if you permit me to also recognize the heads of the departments who are here, and particularly those who have taken on the challenge to be the first adopters of this program, to notwithstand the conditions that we're working on there, to take a risk to do exceptionally well. I would also like to, to recognize our former deputy governor, Mrs. Rosie Adams. for allowing me to continue your, your vision and your thoughts and your passion about public sector transformation. I appreciate it and thank you very much. We also have our complaints commissioner who's here and while this program is geared to ensure we serve our customers well, if you receive fewer complaints about the public service, do not feel anywhere at all, just know that we're working along with you for greatness, that's fine. And to everyone else who came out to just support this initial launch, I think that was the, the most important thing that I had to say because transformation is not about one person, it's not about one leader, it's a joint approach. It's about how we allow the, the public to have a voice, but most importantly, how we allow public officers to have a voice in how great we will become. 
the virtual customer service mailbox is a contract between the public and ourselves. But the most important driver about this mailbox is not about complaints or how we monitor what people say. It's really at the heart how we find a way to recognize and honor persons who work every single day serving clients well. It's how, about we, it's how we find a way to say, notwithstanding some of your current conditions, we care, we see, and we appreciate. So that when persons ask you if this is about complaints, no, that might be the end result. But the really, the, really the, the motivation behind of this is how we recognize persons for serving well. And the culture of service must come with a culture of care. So I'll pause now to say thank you very much for being here to the departments for for, for just trusting us that we mean great things and we, we embrace you and we want to do well. To the public, of course, who has taken a risk with us to take us through this transformation journey, I think it's a good place for us to be in. And lastly, the question that I ask everyone, what does transformation mean to you? A program or project really will sustain only so long, but only when each and every one of us commit to, to greatness. Each and every one of us commit to being better than we are right now, and then in turn, bringing someone along with us, can we really have a transformation success? Forgive me, I don't normally do this, but I want to recognize Dr. Allison Flax Archer for one main reason, uh, not because she's a public officer, but because she, she listens every morning at 4 p.m. about the things about the public service. It's AM, sorry, about the things about the public service and how we're trying to become great. And if you, you, you work with someone like myself, you know I talk a lot about greatness. I just want to recognize you for thanking me for, uh, for, for being here and to say that we were making sense. This is, this is a product of what we're trying to do, and I, I recognize you for that. The rest of the public service. We are on an amazing journey. Trust the process, trust yourselves, and trust your greatness. We will be, in the near future, between number one in the, and number five in the world in the business that we do in public service. We will be up there ranked with the, you name it, um, UK, anywhere. Where else? Singapore, where else? Estonia, we're getting there. Georgia. So I'll, I'll stop now, but to say thank you very much, because I can go on forever, because it's a very exciting moment. And lastly, you will, you will hear from the team behind the energy that this product was developed 100% by our own public officers. And I cannot wait until we recognize them. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Governor. All right, we're at the point that you need to get some more information about why we're here. So the assistant tour guide, private secretary to the deputy governor, Ms. Kelly Moon Rubain, is going to come at this time and she is going to tell you all about the presentation, all about the program and lead you into the video demonstration. Ms. Rubain. This is an exciting moment for the public service and the department, well, sorry, the deputy governor's office. This is something that one morning the DG came into the office and said, I have an idea, and this is what we're going to do. And we're sitting around his table and we're discussing, and from inception to no realization, this is a very big moment. So what I'm going to do today is to give you a brief overview of what the program is, how it will benefit the public service and the territory of the Virgin Islands, considering we are the largest employer in the entire territory. The government of the Virgin Islands being an example to other organizations on what customer service should look like will begin here. The virtual mailbox is basically designed to promote a culture of exceptional customer service. It's designed to identify public officers who have provided exceptional service and where needed, identify where service can be improved. The program is designed to answer the question, how did I serve you? As a public officer, when someone walks into our department, we need to know, how did I serve you? Was I exceptional or was I not so great? Initially, we're going to start with nine departments. We've selected nine 
heavy customer facing departments. They are the Department of Civil Registry, HM Customs, Immigration Department, Department of Trade, Investment Promotions and Consumer Affairs, Labor Department, Social Development Department, the Department of Motor Vehicles, Water and Sewage Department, and the Department of Youth Affairs and Sports. We opted to select one department from each ministry so that we could have a good cross-section across the public service. The pilot phase would run for a period of four to six months. This period would allow us to ascertain how well the program is working and what we can do to tweak the areas that need to be fixed. After the four to six month period, we will roll out this program throughout the entire public service, including all sister islands. So how does it work? We have a web-based tool that was developed in-house by the Department of Information and Technology. I'm going to put them on the spot. Can I ask the IT programming team to please stand so you can be recognized? All of you. I kid you not, when I say they have developed and presented an awesome product, this is beyond what we expected, and I'm so grateful to them. In my book, you all have done exceptional service, and if I'm to rate you using a virtual mailbox, you get fives all the way through. Thank you. So the survey was developed by the Department of IT. It's a short survey, it takes about a minute and a half to complete. We'll go through it on the, the tutorial. Once a submission is made, it's a web-based tool, once a submission is made, the submissions are monitored, um, reviewed, and if you receive a complaint, for instance, a customer makes a, sorry, commendation, um, the email comes to the monitoring department, which is the deputy governor's office. We review it, and the public officer receives a personalized letter from the deputy governor. We ought to make a big deal out of the first person that receives a commendation. The first, I want it to be me, honestly. The first person that receives a commendation, we're coming with balloons, we're coming with flowers. Let me not do that. <laughs> but the DG has decided he is going to make a personal presentation to the very first employee that receives a commendation using a virtual mailbox. You receive a personalized letter from him and you're automatically entered into the employee star membership club. You receive your first star. Yes, this is a big deal. After your first five stars, then you're entered into the first level of the membership club and you receive a bronze pin. You receive 10 commendations, 10 stars, you're entered into the second level of the club and you receive a silver pin. You receive 20 stars, you're entered into the third level and you receive a gold pin. At 30 stars, you become an elite member of the Star Membership Club. That's where I'm heading. I must be an elite member of the Star Membership Club. You receive a very important elite pin and I can see myself wearing it to work every day my elite pin just to say I'm doing such good service. You're entered into the club, you receive the pin. We are, we, are we gonna have a pizza party? <laughs> We're gonna have a party for the first person that becomes an elite member of the Star Membership Club. And it's going to be a big deal. I am so looking forward to this. The hope is that every public officer, especially after the pilot phase has been completed, that every public officer hopes and aims to become an elite member of the Star Membership Club. Wouldn't you like to become somebody, anybody? Okay. On the flip side, if a complaint is made, we're going to review the complaint. We're going to have a conversation with a public officer and ask them, what happened on that day? Why was a complaint made? And we're gonna give them an opportunity to say, well, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and we'll work towards fixing that infraction and working towards how it can never happen again, by hook or crook. If um, 
persons come into the department, we're gonna have in five of the departments, we're gonna have devices set up. The Department of IT assisted us with purchasing kiosks, so they're going to be in five of these departments. You can, as soon as you're finished, nine, right. Um, as soon as you're finished with your service, you go to the kiosk and you fill out the survey and you walk out the door, a minute and a half. The departments that don't have kiosks right now, we're going to present, we're going to have, Mr. Brown, can I have a card, please? We're going to have some small business cards that allow the public officer to write their names on the cards so that you have the opportunity to complete the survey in your own time. So the card looks like this, just a small card. The public officer will write their name on it on your way home. If you're traveling on the boat to Virgin Gorda, you have the opportunity to sign in on your smart device, complete the survey, and click submit. That's it. That's about it. Um, I'm trying to make sure I didn't miss anything. That's about it. So once we complete the survey, I'm going to show you the video now so that you have a better understanding of how the survey works, what to expect. If you have any questions, stick around, we'll answer after. And just look forward to how exciting this program is and how much of a change and how beneficial it will be to the public service and to the territory at large. Thank you. Hello. Welcome to this tutorial for the Public Service Customer Service Virtual Mailbox at eservices.gov.vg slash virtual mailbox. This program is designed to recognize exceptional public service and better serve clients. You are invited to complete the short electronic feedback form upon completion of your service at the location or online in your own time. Public officers receiving five or more commendations will be entered into an exclusive STAR Membership Club, which advances from bronze, silver, and gold status to an elite status when achieving 30 commendations. The goal is for public officers to receive elite membership. Welcome to the home page. From here, please select the date of service, the department visited, the name of the public officer who assisted you, and the service for which you have applied. The areas marked by the red asterisk must be filled in order to continue. Click Next Page to advance to the following screen. Were you able to accomplish the service or process you visited the department to complete? If so, please select yes or no. From the options provided, select an answer to indicate how easy or how difficult it was to accomplish the service or process you completed. Select an answer to indicate your experience with the public officer that served you. Click Next page to advance to the following screen. The following pages allow you to provide separate ratings for the public officer, the ministry or department and your overall customer service experience. You can select ratings from five if you are extremely satisfied through one if you were extremely dissatisfied. Click Next Page to move forward. 
This page describes the experience with the public officer. Select from the check boxes the options that best describe your experience with the officer. You may select multiple options. Click Next Page to move forward. This page outlines the experience with the department. Select from the check boxes the options that best describes your experience. Once again, you are allowed to select multiple options. Click Next Page to move forward. The final page provides the opportunity to state your suggestions on ways to improve the service received. While not mandatory, you are invited to include your name, email address, and telephone number. When completed, Hit the final checkbox labeled, I'm not a robot, and select Submit. That's it! Thank you for taking the time to complete the Public Service Customer Service Virtual Mailbox. This tool is designed to help us recognize exceptional customer service and address areas for improvement. This is Public Service Transformation. We are writing the future now and getting there with you in mind. Okay, even the governor is there doing a little tap to the music, right? <laughs> Okay, right now we're gonna have the presentation to the pilot departments, and we're gonna invite His Excellency the Governor to come and make the presentations. And again, we wanna salute the A-Team from the Department of Information Technology. That's what I call him, the A-Team. Great job. So Governor, we invite you to come at this time. Thank you, P.S. We're going to ask the heads of the pilot departments to come forward so that we can present you with a token of, I want to say appreciation, and basically for agreeing to participate in this very important initiative. We're going to start with Department of Youth Affairs and Sports, Mrs. Brenda Ty Letson. We're presenting them, each department, with a certificate, which we will have, which we are asking them to have displayed in their departments to ensure, to signal their participation, to signal their participation in the program. And also, they're being presented with promotional material that will be displayed in the department as well.
This is going to be displayed in each department as well as on the devices that will be in the departments as well. We also have door signs which will indicate that these departments are part of the pilot department but will eventually be placed on all doors. And we also have the business cards in the packages as well. Thank you, Mrs. Latsumtai. <laughs> department of Motor Vehicles. We have Ms. Joanne, Mrs. Joanne Stout receiving on behalf of the department. Civil Registry and Passport Office, Mrs. Stephanie Ben. Thank you. Mrs. Janice Reimer for the Department of Labor. Mrs. Pearlene Scatliff Leonard of the Department of Water and Sewage. We have HM Customs. Okay. Social, social, oh, the FSS. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Social Development Department. Ms. Christopher should be here. P.S., please. Thank you. Immigration Department, Ms. Rosemary Colwin. And finally, Department of Trade, Investment Promotions, and Consumer Affairs, Mrs. Keria Christopher. We also wish to have Mrs. Skelton Malone come forward. Yes. Mrs. Malone, on behalf of the Deputy Governor and the Deputy Governor's Office, we want to thank you so much for your assistance and, and enabling your team to produce such a wonderful program for us. Thank you. Thank you, Your Excellency and Department Heads. Mrs. Malone, something is coming in the mail. We just didn't want everybody to see what you were getting. All right, we are winding down a program. I told you we will not stay at this journey and this stop longer than an hour. So we're going to invite one of our pilot leaders the Director of Trade, Mrs. Chris Keria Christopher, to come and give some remarks at this time. Mrs. Christopher. Good morning, everybody. I acknowledge the protocol already established, and I'm very thankful for having been granted this platform to speak. Interesting enough, this morning, I was watching an interview with Michelle Obama and Robin Roberts on the launching of her new book, Becoming and she expressed how difficult it was 
to be the first lady and not being able to have a voice and all of the criticism that she took from the public. But as the wife of the president, she had to be respectful of her position. That is very similar to what all of us have to endure, for lack of a better word, because we speak and we work on behalf of the government of the Virgin Islands. It is very hard to do, but I believe we're all here because we're excited about the changes that is to come. She spoke about now being able to have that platform and how it hurt when she read some of the very negative comments that the public felt. And interestingly enough, I was on a plane yesterday and I got a text and I was like, what's happening with trade? And I was like, I don't know what's happening. Check the community board and there it is trade department getting torn up. And so that's the same thing. I'm not saying I'm Michelle Obama, so please don't say I'm Michelle Obama. I'm not saying that, but it's the very same exact thing. You know, we persons that are departments that are very customer facing, we understand that the tactics of the job is that we have to be in the public's eye. We understand that the public has a right to really speak their voice. And I'm here to really encourage us, myself included, not to take it personal. This is part of the job and we should take what the public says most times and try to learn from it. This virtual mailbox allows the public to compliment us and give us feedback. And yes, give us pointers on what we need to improve. For many of us, this type of openness injects the fear of the unknown. I've asked a question, where's Ms. Penn? Many times, what happens when someone has a personal axe to grind? They don't like Carrier Christopher. I mean, who could not like me? I don't know. But just the case that somebody may not like me or one of my team members. What happens when somebody insistently wants to bring a department down for personal gains? I mean, she smiled her beautiful smile and she didn't really have that answer, but I understood that we know that change is coming and I want folks to understand that this is what people do sometimes and we should never be fearful of that. People will always be people and it's our job to smile and make the government of the Virgin Islands look the best. And on an off note, I always say to my staff, we should be thankful that a year plus after Hurricane Omar, most of us don't have houses or bills, but we still have jobs and our paycheck has not been moved one single cent. So for that alone, I am very, very grateful, even though sometimes when I go to work and I get a headache, I remember that my paycheck is still there and I can take care of my kids. And so we're very grateful. And so that should be the chronicle point for us to provide the best service that we have ever had. Please understand that we should put that fear to bed. And we should also know that change is constant and we must embrace it or else we will get left behind. Working as a civil servant, yes, can be thankful. But believe, I believe that your work should reflect yourself. And so I even believe that when you reach to the Department of Trade, you should look like the Department of Trade. I have no apologies for that either. You should dress properly. You don't have to have all this paint on your face like me, but your hair should be combed. You should dress, act like what you are. That's what I keep saying, act like what you are. And so we expect that persons who work for us, who work for the civil servant, will be greeted with a smile. I might not have a good day, my husband might have just upset me, but the world doesn't need to know that. We need to be able to put that on the side and embrace our community, the people who pay us and give us the best service possible. So yes, your work should reflect you, trickle down to the civil servant, as a civil servant and the department as a whole. I also believe in being a good team member and also complimenting persons when they're doing well. I had the opportunity about a week and a half or two weeks ago to go to the civil registry. A very simple, I thought it was simple, passport form. I made a mockery of that and I text um, Mrs. Stephanie Ben, who is here, and I would like you guys, because I never gave anybody an A+. I gave the civil registry a full A+. They sat with me, they explained everything, and I left with everything I needed to. So, Ms. Stephanie Ben, if this was a competition, I'll have to up my game, but congratulations. <laughs> the folks in your office were stellar, superior, so thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, I am here to endorse this movement, our virtual mailbox, but I'm also here to implore our department heads to support your staff, to encourage them, 
and yes, to hold their hands. That does not mean that they shouldn't be accountable, but we as department heads have the responsibility not to speak down to our employees in the event that they get n not a good, uh, I guess, request from the public or a good uh, endorsement. So we have to put ourselves, because it's very difficult to face the public, and so yes, we may have some of those civil servants that may not do a good job, but we owe it to ourselves to hold their hands and ensure that we do our best. And lastly, Deputy Governor David Archer, the buck also stops with you. So while we're here and applauding you for this wonderful mailbox that you have invented, you owe it to us to provide the services and the tools that we need as a department to do an exceptional service and to not only do our job well, but exceed expectations. So I wanna say thank you for allowing me to have this five minute speech, if it's not like a word, and I really wish the civil service well. I'm excited to be a part of it. Not nervous at all because, yes, in trade, we embrace change and we're custom of the blue, so we're good for it. Thank you very much, and everybody have a great day. Thank you very much, the one and only carrier, Christopher. <laughs> we all know, like Oprah Winfrey, she catches a kick, she keeps our attention whenever she speaks. Thank you very much. And you know, as she was speaking, I'm going to come off this journey now because. Last week, I had an opportunity to speak to a public officer who has, who joined the public service in the 60s. The days when being a public officer was a, pre a prestigious job. And I want us to understand that it is still a prestigious job. You see, many of you take it for granted because you see, we came in the public service in the era when we didn't have to go home when you got pregnant outside of wedlock. Y'all don't even know about that, do you? you? You had to go home because this was a job of the day and you don't dare walk in the public service pregnant and not be married. So you see, we have come in the era and we forget. We forget. When it was really, if you got a government job, you were really in the elite club, okay? We didn't have stars at the time. But I just want to encourage us to understand, regardless of the circumstances in which we are working, not that we're going to just relax and say it's okay to come and you're not breathing properly, but understand that we have a responsibility to serve the public and to do it well. It's an honor. It's a privilege to be a public officer. And in the year 2018, let us look at this as being just as prestigious as it was in the 60s when you had to come in and if we had Miss Western around of us, some of us wouldn't even get in the government door. You understand what I'm saying? But we are grateful for people like the Audrey Westerns and the Retalia O'Neills, those who have set the tone and really blazed a trail that we can walk in the public service today. So we want to say thank you for coming out and we've come to the end of our journey and I'll stop this morning. So I want to pause to say thank you, His Excellency the Governor. We know you have a very busy schedule, so we thank you for gracing us with your presence. Mr. Stevens, Mr. Greg Adams, Ms. Akisha Smith for the opening parts that you played, Mrs. Christopher for being the bold one to accept the invitation to just say thanks on behalf of the pilot department. And to you, the pilot department, you know, if public facing departments, like Ms. Christopher say, you come, against, you come up against a lot of criticism sometimes. And sometimes it's not always, um, yes, we know that some public officers don't always play the part, but also we know that there are many who do a wonderful job on a daily basis. So the departments trade, <laughs> motor vehicles. I, I don't know if you remember the days when you had to go up there and literally be standing long lines for motor vehicles. And when you go down down there, I mean, Mr. Rima is not here today, but I have to say, when you go to motor vehicles, PS, give me your information. Last time I went down there, I didn't even get out of my Jeep. I was in my Jeep and I got everything done. And that's the kind of service that you can get. Okay, so we want to really applaud persons, labor department, immigration department. You heard that they're going to be the pilot programs departments even as we embark on our e-government journey. Listen, if all of us had to deal with those people every day, in every time you could smile. 
but you can always be nice, right? So we want to thank them very much. Customs, Youth Affairs and Sports, Water and Sewage, Social Development Department, and Civil Registry and Passport. We want to thank you, heads of department, for being a part of the pilot project. The staff of the Department of Information and, Rela Information and Public Relations always on the job. They are on call basically every day of the week. Right, Raniel? All the time, on the job. Yes, Dorian, thank you. All right, and all the staff at IT again, thank you very much. And all of you public officers for coming out this morning, we say thank you. And again, if you have any further questions, remember I told you that the chief tour guide is going to be around, right? And Ms. Rubain is going to come and she'll give you the final remarks again. Thank you very much for being here. To officially launch the public service, customer service virtual mailbox, I ask the DG to come forward and officially make this program live. importance of having the right people around you. It is obvious that I don't know a lot about this. So this button here, that's this what I press? There we go. We're officially live. All right, and again, I'm very pleased to see the support this morning. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your schedules to come here this morning. It's live, so we will hear. So, this is the first person who get a lot of balloons and different things, right? So, but you have to have a service. So let's go, go back to your offices, provide the service that you know we need to provide. Mr. Foy, I'm happy, you know part of this public service Transformation is about aligning our statutory bodies. I don't know if we have another one, but I have to highlight the one that's under the governor's group, the deputy governor's group, Mr. Alcido Foy, direct, acting director, financial investigation. Stand up so they could see you. Maybe they don't know you. <laughs> Mr. Foy is the acting director of the financial investigation agency. So we are happy to see the statutory bodies because we want you to align with everything that we're doing. Thank you.